That's bad lighting. That's possibly worse. But it's as good as it's gonna get. So what's going on today? Well, I'm in my wintertime hanging room, summertime workshop, if you will. Because I guess I'm spoiled like that. If it gets hot outside, I can just crank an air conditioner on. So yeah, spoiled, spoiled. So what's going on today? Well, got all this war right here. And I'm gonna end up building a rabbit cage. Y'all know we're in the process of building a chicken pen, all that good stuff. Um, but I need to build this first because I need to build everything else around it if that makes any sense. So the dimensions are going to be 30 inches by 8 foot and by 2 foot for each little bay here. And that's this is the top view of the rabbit pen. This is going to be the front view. <clears throat> Needs to be about 14 inches tall and I'll explain why in a second. Still the 8 foot. Now these doors, I'm probably going to have them centered or I'm probably going to have them off to the edge. That way I can stick the water bottle in the door and then have enough space to the side to stick the feet in. Now this is apt to change between here and me finishing this project, so stay tuned. And also on the very bottom of them, I'm gonna take some of this excess war that I've got and actually make an end pen um, rabbit box, if you were a nesting box, if you will. And these legs, there's no dimensions on that yet. That's, that's for an external thing outside. This has nothing to do with the cage. But either way, that's kind of what it's gonna look like. The war I'm using, this is one by one. I usually get one by two, uh, kind of like this war right here. Just to let y'all, stay put. Just let y'all see the difference. Yeah, I doubt that's gonna show up on camera very well, but y'all get the idea. So anyways, uh, the reason I use it, I don't know, I guess it's I mean, it takes less water to make this, so I'm assuming this is cheaper, but I don't know. I do know this is all they had down there uh, at the time when I went to buy this. So this is what the body of it's gonna be made of. Now, the reason I say 14 inches earlier is this is gonna be, well, man, never mind. I can actually make it taller than that because this is one by one. Anyways, the deal of it is this is, 36 inches, that means it's gonna be 36 squares. So, but you can't cut it dead in half because you're gonna have this little, you're gonna have stuff sticking out the top. So you're actually gonna lose two inches right here, which is gonna be 34 divided by two. That's gonna be actually 17 inches. So, hey, that's gonna be nice actually. See, I told you this was apt to change. But anyways, gotta cut that to dimension. The bottom, I'm using the half inch by one inch. This works a lot better than that half inch by half inch uh, mesh. Um, that crap is weak, breaks, and just, it ain't, it ain't good. Just go ahead and, if you're gonna build one, get the half inch by one inch stuff. It's made out of a better gauge. It's just better all the way around. So, first things first, I'm needing an eight foot bottom. So I'm gonna measure at eight foot, I'm gonna cut this. And for cutting, I normally use these kind of plier or cutters, what are you gonna call them? I don't know what, I don't know what they're called. WIS, W-I-S-S. Anyways, whatever it is, there you go. You can look them up. I don't, I don't know, they're war cutters, I guess. That's what I normally use. I'm gonna try something different on this one because them, them cutters oftentimes leave a sharp edge when they pinch the metal, it comes up, it makes a real sharp edge. And you cut yourself a lot. So I'm gonna try this out. I've never cut wire with an angle grinder, but y'all fix and see it happen.
Okay, now we've got to flatten it out. And another thing, a uh, little trick I do, you notice how it's curled inwards like this. Let's say it's curled like this. Well, anytime I flatten it out, I always gonna make sure that the, if when I'm building the bottom, make sure the top is what's got the bow. Because when you flatten it out, it has a natural tendency to push up. See what I'm saying? If you do it the other way, it has a natural tendency to sag down. That's exactly what it's gonna do. Just, just after a little while, the rabbit's jumping on the stuff, it's gonna have these big sags and stuff. So, And it works that way on a lot of stuff, even boards. Um, if you're building a porch or something, if you notice that bow, board's got a bow kind of like this. Hope that light ain't messing you up. If it's got a bow like this, you don't put it down like this and nail it on the porch because it's just going to worsen, worsen and create more of a sag. You want to do it like this. That way when it flattens out, it might be straight. See what I'm saying? So war, wood, women, whatever. Y'all get the idea. <laughs> anyway, let's flatten this out. Let's move on to this, start making the sides and the dividers and all that stuff. Also, I'm gonna to try to be careful with this war because <laughs> the guy that was unraveling it for me and everything, he ended up stabbing himself a couple of times with these uh, excess points right here. So <sighs> maybe I need to go ahead and cut them off first before I move on to anything else. And because just, just to decrease getting stabbed, Although he did say he had some rare old whatever blood, so whatever. <laughs> Not that that makes a dang, but anyways. Okay, back to what I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> and I hope you can see that. This is 36 inches right here. Half of 36 is 18. Unfortunately, I can't just cut right down this because it's gonna, one end's either gonna be taller or shorter or something's gonna happen. So I've got to cut away these two in the middle, which is gonna make 17 inches on this side. Take this away. 17 inches on this side. So, <clears throat> That's how tall it's going to be. Now, you could make it three foot tall. It's just a waste of water, I think. It's still plenty of room. And my other cages out there, for whatever reason, those ended up being 14 inches. So, I don't know what kind of water I had back then, but either way, it ain't this water. So, we're going to cut a strip here. I'm going to cut a strip here. And this should be the front and the back. Stay tuned. pieces like this that's some of your waste they pretty much ain't got no use one thing you can do is you can come back and if y'all know another use for them let me know but you can come back and cut off all these points and just leave that bar in the middle 
and you can bend them around and bend them back and you can also make a little hanger that you put the bottle into the cage with if y'all know what i'm talking about it looks like a little horseshoe with little curls on the end of it and so you can keep them around for that just as a replacement i don't like doing that because oftentimes it gets rough right through here and so many times taking that bottle in and out from where you cut these little tines off it's just going to it's going to cut your bottle all up. It's eventually going to leak and it's going to look like crap. But uh, I imagine you could take, maybe like put some duct tape or something around them or any kind of tape, some kind of coating over the water to help further protect them. But either way, there you go. Y'all can use them. That's one little thing you can do with some of your waste. Also help out your rabbit situation. And I'm sure there's other uses. If y'all know any, let me know. I'm curious. Okay, now, now we got to rip that big long bottom piece, whatever, the half inch by one inch water. We gotta go for 30 inches. <clears throat> okay, so this is the next step. <clears throat> now, remember what I was telling you earlier about which way the war naturally wants to bow, and you see this war is bowing this way. So, I'm gonna make the bow go towards the inside, like this. That's what it's gonna be ultimately. Cause the rabbit's on the inside pushing out. So once again, you want the bow inside against the pressure of the rabbit. So for now, just lay them down, get your corners lined up. Some people call them J clips, J clamps. I don't care, rabbit clips. It's a little, little J clip, that's what it is right there. And this is the crappiest set of J clip pliers you can get, but they'll get the job done. Get them in there, hold them in there with a little bit of pressure. Like I said, you want to get your corners lined up first. And we're only going to be clipping the bottom right now. And it'll work like a hinge, really. And it lets us go and build and do other stuff. So, just for now. Just like that. It'll wrap around it. It'll hold it there. Job's done in the corners. I usually sure them up a little bit. There we go. By putting in a, at least a couple, because your corners are sometimes the first things to tear, and that's where a lot of your strength is at. So I really sure them up. Now, you can do that one. I'm gonna go down here in the middle somewhere, pop another one in, just to help line things up. and then sure up the corner. And another little trick, like right down here, hopefully you can see there's a big gap. If the warrant won't line up, reach in there with just your pliers first, grab it, give it a little twist, and it brings them a lot closer together and makes them more workable. Just a little trick. So, same thing down here, sure it up. Come right over. Now, the reason you only do the bottom is because it'll, like I said, it'll make like a little hinge right here. Now, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to put a little clip every three or four inches. It ain't got to be overkill. I mean, if you want to do it every single one, go ahead. It's your cage, but it just ain't really necessary. Like I said, about every three or four is fine. So... All right, and here's where we currently are. You can see basically how it's coming together. So now I gotta make the dividers, I need five of them. One for each end, that's two, and then I need three in the middle to separate and make four bays. So I gotta make five pieces that are gonna be 30 by 17. So that's how tall this particular model is. And for that trick I was telling you about earlier, well, here it is. Y'all can remember we had some of this, uh, when we made the bottom, some of this leftover half inch by one inch war, we're going to make what's called baby saker. And what that basically boils down to is 
all the way around the perimeter of the pan, about that, you know, three, four inches up, all the way around the bottom and along the bottom of every divider, you're gonna come back and put this little bitty wire. Now it's called Baby Saver because it, it pretty much does what it says, help save the babies. In other words, they can't, because a little baby rabbit can get through that one by two war, but it can't get through this half by one war. So we're gonna cut them out like normal, and I'm sure it'd actually be cheaper to actually save more war and actually cut these and or just clamp these to the rest of them, but, huh, why don't we just do that? That's five, I don't have to have, I only have to cut them 12. Hmm, we may end up doing that instead. We're learning together, people, we're learning together. So I'm gonna do that, just save war. Let's get on with it. Another little tip, and I'm sure a lot of y'all know this, if you have to, if you got a little tool, power tool, whatever, and it involves something else to change out bits, blades, whatever, disc, it's always a good idea to either tape that tool to the cord or put an attachment that's already on the cord to hold that tool there. But anyways, just thought I'd share that right quick. Yeah, there you go, little tool advice. Okay, right here I'm going to take a shortcut. <clears throat> you know, I told you about the bows and which way the rabbit's going to move, this, that, and other. And the dividers, not the end pieces, but the dividers, you know, three out of five of them, you really ain't got to do a whole lot to them besides straighten them out this way. But as far as the bow going down it this way, what you can do to help make them counter each other, you see this one's already, this one's bowed down, this one's bowed up. Well, by the time you go in there and clip them together, they're gonna to kind of, they're gonna work against each other. If it makes any sense, they're gonna to help to straighten each other out. So for the three in the middle, that's what I'm gonna do. And then when I get to the outside, I'm gonna do it like this, and then have this bow facing towards the inside. I have the same directional bow. You know, both of them bow the same direction. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. So let's get on with it. And another trick, <coughs> I don't think I've told it already, but right here in the end, you see where I've only put one little J clip at. But you notice how it'll slide back and forth. So a little trick I'm going to do, I'm going to put two right there. It don't matter where you put the two at. I just like putting them at the edges. I just feel it gives them more strength. This one likes to hold three. But the idea of it is, once you fill that gap up, it can no longer slide. Uh, this one just happened to take three. So you can see already, just from what it done a second ago, to that. That's a whole lot less movement. And you ain't got to do it on every one. Just as long as it's somewhere in the lineup, just keep everything from sliding back and forth, it'll get the job done.
Uh, okay, just so we know, uh, that tractor supply went ahead and bought these little feeders here. Got J clips. This was seven dollars and something for this. It's like half a pound, like 0.55 a pound, it's right over half. It's like seven or eight bucks. This is like four bucks for a pound at the co-op. But I got these just in case the co-op didn't have any. The co-op had bukus of them cheap. Tractor supply, you done me dirty. I remember that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, leaky. I'm talking to the camera, baby. But I only got three of these because I got one or two more of these laying around so I didn't see a point buying another one. But why can't they ever sell them in the same color? I've seen them gray and blue and purple and green. But I've never seen enough of them at the same time when I was building the pen. Why is that? Why they got to be a rainbow thing? Is it because it's a rabbit and has something to do with Easter? I don't know, but here we go. Let's finish this up. Oh, one more thing. I'm just going to use a wire cutter instead of using the uh, angle grinder to cut out for the feeder. Because... Why not? I don't really need that, I don't guess. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get stabbed reaching in with the feeders. The feeder's gonna cover that up, so I ain't worried about that. And uh, let's get you cut. Yes. What is that? What was that? <laughs> it's been thrown in the water, away. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. Now, what I'm going to do over here, I changed my mind as far as putting the, the feeder on the right side. I started to decide, I decided, oh good lord, to put it on the left side. Reason being, I'm right handed. So I figured it'd be easier to reach in there with my right hand and kind of curl around this way than it would try to get over here and not be able to bend that way or try to use my left hand. So I decided to have the door on this side. I'm going to have them swinging probably out this way. I ain't decided on that or not yet, neither, but we'll have to see how it goes. Because on the outside, you know, it'd be more beneficial to swing this way, but, you know, it not, ain't really going to make much of a difference once I swap over here because you're going to have a feeder on either side, so. I ain't plumb decided on it, but we're going to get it figured out. So I'm probably going to cut this one out first and then go from there. One thing else I really screwed up now just then, I forgot about. I supposed to put baby saver down through here. Crap. And this is where we're currently at. So yeah. Got the little baby saber coming through here and in all the dividers all the way down. Now, what's probably fixing to happen, I could come through here and cut this out like a crazy jigsaw puzzle. Still come up five inches, have to cut around the war and come up. I can do that, or I can be lazy. And I can come right here at the bottom and say two inches is probably good enough. Cause usually on the baby saber stuff, you see it on that one by two war. Well, this is one by one. So in my mind, I could be wrong, but in my mind, it's, there's probably a less chance of them getting through this. And by the time they're already, you know, two inches tall, they probably ain't gonna fit through this little one inch hole three inches up. A lot of inches going on there. So anyways, I'm gonna be lazy. I'm gonna make a two inch strip, go all the way down, and uh, here we go. And what I've decided to do on the door here <coughs> is, Instead of having a door that's going to swing out this way or that way, I just decided to go ahead and let it fall down like this. So, what I've done, since I know that I'm going to come back later, with, I don't know what it's called, it's a little plastic stuff you put right here, it keeps you from scratching yourself so much. I want it coated all the way around this thing. So, if I was to hinge it right here at the very edge and come down, you couldn't put that stuff on there then, because you'd have this wire in the way. So this hole is 11 by 12, the door is 13 by 13. Now the concept of it is, 
you come a run below it, clip it on there, and the J-clips will act as your hinges. See, there's an inch, an inch difference here. It's also sticking out a half inch on all the edges all the way around. And there's also an inch overlap up here at the top that y'all can't see. So, <laughs> there's an inch overlap at the top, which also gives me a place to put my dog snap. So, that's how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna continue to cut some 11 by 12 holes all the way down and putting the doors on it. And there you go. Also, one more quick tip. You don't want them doors flat. See, this one's got a bow. The concept of that being is, once again, rabbits are gonna try to push out and stuff. So you want this to bow out that way when you clip it on, there's a lot of pressure pushing inwards. So you let it down, do your business, put it up here, and that extra bit of tension really makes a difference. Because if it was the other way around, or if it was straight, eventually they would push it out, and you'd have gaps and you'd run into some issues. So make sure your doors have got a bow to them. And if the rabbits ever do, for what, which I've never had it happen, but if they do bow it out, just bend the wire, heck it's wire, bend it, and then push it right back. Okay, now for the other stuff. Alrighty, we are two steps away from having that rabbit cage complete at this point. But I'm going to show you something in the meantime just for craps and giggles. Oh, hey, look at y'all. <laughs> anyways, got them in a ground pan or whatever. So anyways, what I'm going to show you now, these are two different nest box designs that I've had luck with in the past. Here's one, you can, buy this, you can buy this at Tractor Supply. Now, chicken crap not included. So, I mean, if you go down there and you, I mean, you find just a plain one, I mean, don't be disappointed. They normally don't come this way. This is custom. So anyways, um, what I'm wanting to do, instead of using an S-Box traditionally, just throw it in there when she's fixing to have them, whatever. I'm wanting to make a drop down nest box. That's for end floor nest box, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you build them out of half inch war and you just cut out a hole in the bottom and just, you know, clamp them to it. So, I know these are two toe, and I'm trying to model them after these designs. And I've seen different designs, but I'm probably going to go with this one. <clears throat> as far as this depth is concerned, build me a little war basket, same dimensions as this, and put it up in there because Degum, this has worked. I don't see any reason not to use it. I may go a little deeper just to be a little safer, but I don't see much reason not to do that. It also would take less war. But either way, let's get some dimensions on that. That is almost four inches. And that's like five on the dot. So, hmm. I may compromise or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get to it. But either way, got to get them built and got to get these and go around them doors just like these doors have been gone around. So let's get on with that.
Okay, here these are looking sexy and goodbye scratch storms. Because that ain't no fun. So anyways, uh, now then, on to the feeders. Now, we're not done with them yet, unfortunately. Some else just popped up. Got to looking at them, and that's, that's kicking out pretty bad at the bottom. Other ones don't do that, and I ain't 100% certain why, but I don't like that. I also realize there ain't hardly enough space in between this run and this run up here, so I'm fixing to make a modification. Now I'm hoping that little channel I just carved in the back will allow the war to lay right in there and keep it locked in. Let's find out. I'll be done. Seems to be holding in there now. So yeah, there might be something to consider when you go to buying these. You may have to put a little extra groove down them, so let's do that to the rest of them. All right, everybody, I, I did it. I broke down, I bought me another one. And these little blue feeders overpriced. I, I done, all right, it looks good now. Anyways, I got it done. That dog snaps, and this would suit about 90% of people because most people are just going to use a nest box anyhow. But anyways, uh, let's get on to building the drop-down nest box. Alrighty, now I've got the cage flipped upside down. <coughs> so, my next plan is, I want to probably, the design I settled on is going to be just a little flat box kind, nest box. And I've just settled on a 10 by 10 by 5 inches deep, if that makes any sense. But I got it upside down, so I got to cut out a 10 inch square right here. And the idea is I'm going to have a buck on the end, and I'm going to have the does go with the remainder of the way, probably three does. So that's my game plan, fixing to try it out. So here we go. Uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and possibly build the cages, so I'm to that. Okay, I was just kidding, times three. One of them is a butt pen. So, it's down here. Now, I ain't cut the doors or the, the holes out in the bottom of the floor yet because earlier I had some issues when I was making this little baby saver in, on the inside dividers that it didn't line up exactly with the inch measurement, inch increments that it was supposed to line up with, with the one by one more. So I figured just in case there was some bullcrap play, we could correct it right now. And there is some bullcrap play. And it's its own daggum war. <laughs> it ain't gonna be bad though. It's gonna be doable. But anyways, I'm thinking about having them right in front of the door. It's just easy to get to them and it still leaves a big, big solid chunks of the each bay for them to be in. So if it's right in the middle, they'd have to dance all around and it'd just be a little, well, let's just take a look at it or have a comparison. I mean, that rabbit only ever have just this little strip all the way around the edge, but if you got it over in the corner, there's plenty of room to lay down, play, do whatever it's gonna do, you know, and still have this. So anyways, Probably gonna put them right in front of the door. Probably gonna go two inches back. Probably two inches in. Well, let's get them cut out. Ugh. Well, can't say that you're told it up. There you go, everybody. That's how to build a badass rabbit cage. Now. That's a lot of work, a little bit of aggravation. I still gotta go on the inside here and finish clamping up these boxes on the bottom. But that's what it's gonna look like. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. And uh, be looking, this as this video is entitled, it's gonna be entitled How to Build a Badass Rabbit Cage or whatever. So next video, I'll be looking how to build a badass rabbit cage stand. Stay tuned. <laughs>